personal injury court. This is the matter of Simmons versus Hargrove. Mr. and Mrs. Simmons, uh, I've read the materials that you all have submitted to this court. It appears you all are suing Mr. Hargrove for injuries that you sustained when you went down a water slide at his park. Uh, you're asking this court to award you $200,000 in past medical expenses and $1.8 million for pain and suffering for a total of $2 million. Is that correct? Yes, yes Your Honor. Honor. All right, Mr. Hargrove, your response to this is he uh, got what he paid for in terms of going down a water slide. This is not your fault. He assumed the risk. Yes, Your Honor. All right, now let's get into the legal sauce. Tell me how we got here, Mr. Simmons. Well, I'm a family man, as you can see. I went to the water park with my wife and my son, and we had planned this for a while. How old was your son? Oh, he's four. So you're a real dad. Yo, yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay. And I'm a water park enthusiast. Uh, I'm known around, they call me Big Sexy. Okay. So... <laughs> Why this park this day? Well, the park actually had a new attraction called the Devil's Descent. Okay. Um, it's one of the highest slides in the state, and I, I had to go ahead and make sure that I could get on, especially with my son being afraid of heights. Heights make me nervous. I did this with my own son, who's uh, now 28, trying to prove to him that I could do it, but I didn't end up the way you did. It was the worst day. Now, is this what you, uh, what you being prepared on the day of the incident to go down the slide, is that you? Yes, sir. That's big sexy. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And you look pretty happy there. Like, you're, you're excited and ready to have a good time with your wife and son. I was. Was your little boy excited? Oh, he was, he was excited. He was running around the park. I was trying to chase him and everything, trying to keep up with him. Uh, he's my everything, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Hargrove, tell me about your park. Um, well, this park has been in my family for three generations. Okay. Uh, my grandfather started it 32 years ago, and then he passed it down to my father. I have been running it for the last three years. We get over seven million visitors a year now. That's a lot of folks. That's absolutely a lot of folks. And with that being said, with those seven million a year, we have no injuries. Now, you, you've got this ride. Uh, what's, what's the slide called? It's the Devil's Descent. It's a brand new ride. It's the new attraction. It's why everybody's coming to get a ride on that Devil's Descent. Mr. Simmons, today you don't look as excited as you seem to be in that picture when you were about to ride the slide. Tell me how this thing happened. I go to get on the ride. It's actually about a 25-minute wait. Okay. So I have my wife and my son stay at the bottom. That kind of builds the excitement, though, right? Oh, it does. And I know he's excited. I see him down there jumping and waving, and, and I know I'm going to make him proud when I go down this slide. Now, Mr. Simmons, you submitted a few documents to the court. Uh, one is a picture of the slide. I, I want you, if you can, take your time, but I want you, and Sheriff Matt, if you'll help him get over to the uh, plasma, I want you to explain exactly how this happened, because I've never been on this slide, and frankly, don't uh, care to get on it. It's too high for me. Yes, Your Honor. Come on, cross over. Now, is this the slide that you uh, went down? Yes, Your Honor. It's about 150 feet up. <laughs> so when you get at the top, you notice that you're, you're very high up. Okay. It's immediate. Up here, everything was fine. Next thing I know, I get to this second slide right here, the second bump, and that's where I, I was in the air. You went airborne? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I felt like I didn't touch back down till about here, and that was scary, because about here is where I, I noticed I had to be going maybe 60, 70 miles an hour. Okay. I'm flying. When I come down here, I feel it just continue, and I get to the water. Instead of splashing in, it just kind of skipped across the top here. Like, like a stone on a pond? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Exactly. It was the most traumatic feeling of my life. Then I continued across, immediately felt pain as I landed on the concrete, and then I slammed into the retaining wall. I was thinking, oh, God, I'm, I'm going to die. Yes, sir. It was the most terrifying experience of my entire life. Yes, sir. You may return to the podium. Thank you. Now, Mrs. Simmons, I've been talking like you're not in the room, but I'm watching your face. What was this like for you? You're standing there with your son. To go from that and seeing him at the top all bubbly to now wondering if your husband's going to make it, wondering if your son's going to have a father, that was a, a drastic change. You know, to see your husband flying into... Did he see his dad hit the wall? He did. And what was his reaction? He's traumatized, crying. 
crying in tears. In so tears. you're trying to comfort him. Exactly. You're frightened about your husband. You're scared. Exactly. Yes. Pandemonium. Mr. Hargrove, are you a family man? I am a family man. Yes. Uh, sir. You you have babies. Uh, absolutely. This kind of thing changes a marriage, uh, changes a lot of things that are meaningful. True. And I truly sympathize with him. But at the same time, it, it is not the fault of our company. I wish he just would have paid attention to all the warnings that were there ahead of time. We could have really, you know, resolved the whole issue. Well, how's he to know that? Okay, so we have signs. When you walk into the park, the sign says, right at your own risk. That's the uh, entrance to your park? Yes, sir. Was that posted the day that Mr. and Mrs. Simmons and their little boy came into the park? That it, yes, sir. It's, po it's posted every day. Now, did you see that sign? Did either of you see that sign? No, no Your Honor. I mean, it's, it's kind of right there. Why wouldn't you see the sign? Like he said, they have over 7 million people come during the summer. The park was at full capacity. You did walk in that entrance, though. I mean, yes, I walked in actually to the left. That, and that is a at big sign. sign, though, right? I mean, they, they make it big like that so 7 million people can see it. Your Honor, right? it, that's not the only place it is. That is at the beginning, at the entrance, but we have the signs pasted all over the park. He's doing the bare he, minimum. He, he has the signs for the protocol, doing the bare minimum and not really caring about the people because you, you should have yeah. told us when we were buying the ticket. Mr. Simmons, I see uh, from the documents that you submitted to this court that you have $200,000 in medical expenses. Tell me about your injuries. I broke my neck when I collided into the wall. It was probably the most excruciating pain. I still deal with this every day. I can't turn. I have limited vision. Uh, they had to do the fusion, and now I, I, I have to wear this brace. Yes, sir. You know, it, it makes everything tough, and this isn't my only injury. Now, you've got your arm up in this, this uh, sling. Tell, tell me about that. Yes, so while I took damage to my arm, I broke my collarbone. Okay. Now, we've got another x-ray. This circle shows a bone broken. Is that your clavicle? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. How has this and these injuries affected you being a dad? I feel like I'm not. I, I can't pick my son up. I see him and he comes in and he, he'll try to play and I can't because I'm just in excruciating pain. I mean, that's pretty bad, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I sympathize with him. I sympathize with his pain and his suffering. That's good to hear. But it's not our fault. He violated the weight policy. Well, I, don't, I don't see anything on here about a weight policy. How is it supposed to work? The weight policy just informs uh, all of our riders um, that if you're above a certain uh, weight, this is not the ride for you because you, it could cause you some type of issue. Now, Above a certain weight, what weight? Yeah, it depends I mean, and, on the ride. be careful, on, I'm a 235 pounds. Okay, on this ride particular, the, the weight is 300 pounds. Okay. Uh, Mr. Simmons is clearly over 300 pounds. How would he know about the 300 pound limit? We have a sign, we, we have a sign posted on the ride. You've submitted that sign to the court? Yeah, yes, sir. All right, let's take a look at it. The red circle says maximum weight 300 pounds. Yes, sir. Okay, and you expect that he would see that? Uh, yes, sir. Now, Mr. Simmons, I'm asking here uh, gently, how much do you weigh, sir? 365. And were you 365 thereabouts on the day that you rode this uh, Devil's Descent? Yes, Your Honor. Now, sitting here in this courtroom, this looks like it's plain as the day is long, that uh, 300 pounds or more, you shouldn't ride this ride. Did you see this sign? No, Your Honor. So you weren't paying attention again? The park is crowded. I mean, how can we see that? You know, you the, expect the, the excitement. We're just going in to have a good time. Your Nobody Honor, it's not crowded at the top of the, of the slide. There's only one person at a time. Well, you, you're reading my mind there, Mr. He, Hargrove. He, he, he's overweight, sir. He's fat. I'm sorry. He, he's, he's fat. Be respectful. We're not going to do that here. That is inappropriate. It is out of line. Yes, Your Honor. We're trying to get to the truth here. Yes, Your Honor. I understand, I understand. But it's not my fault that he's overweight. And it's not my fault that he didn't pay attention to the signs. We have them all over the park on each ride. I, I just noticed it on this picture right now. But you do have a responsibility to let us know. Like, you should Someone have a responsibility have to something. tell us to, to, to that he's overweight. Ma'am, ma'am, we did let you know. We put signs up. We don't have people walking around with microphones checking everybody. It's 7 million well, people you, there. Well, you should, because clearly it, it'll hurt someone if it's overweight. Other than the weight policy, we have two sets of inner tubes that's up there. The smaller inner tubes are for children. The bigger inner tubes are for the adults. Okay, this is the bigger inner tube. This is the inner tube for adults. It has less air in it, so it travels down at a slower rate. He chose to get on the smaller inner tube. How would he know? 
How would he know which is for whom? We're, we're not mind readers. Apparently, we're not Mr. Hargrove, this is important to you. Yes, right? it's important. And they are separated. They have some, the, the small ones are set to the side for children. Okay. It says kids, and the large ones are to the other side for adults. How do, how do they select the two? No, we have a lifeguard at the top. At all times? At all times. Okay. And you brought a witness uh, with you. Is this uh, your lifeguard? This is my lifeguard. Who was there that day? Miss uh, Annie Davis is your name. Yes, Your Would Honor. Would you stand up, please, and come to the podium? Yes, sir. When you saw him, did you have any thoughts or concerns about your safety rules? Yes, sir. I, I asked him if he was sure that he should be riding the ride, um, insinuating to him that I thought he may be over the weight limit. Well, why not just say to him, sir, this is a 300-pound weight limit. I don't know how much you weigh. I don't mean to embarrass you. But if you're over 300 pounds, you can't ride this ride. That, I won't be that embarrassed was my if concern. you're trying to save my life. That was my concern of embarrassing him or offending him. And I assume that he understood where I was going with that based on the nonverbal communication of what the eye contact. What would make you assume that? His eye contact with me and my, uh, and my um, designating the sign that I was sure that he saw. Uh, I was always taught you were supposed to make eye contact with everyone, so that didn't, that didn't mean anything. If you, if you felt like my life was in danger... Ms. Davis, when you see that he's going to ride the ride, did you try to stop him? Sir, I turned around and I noticed that he was using the kid size tube. So at that point, I assumed that he was okay with the weight limit and that he was affirming to me he was under it. And so I turned to replace the inner tube that he had grabbed, which is for a child size. So when he, adult size. when he reaches to grab the child's inner tube, you took that as uh, he's saying he's to you, confirmed that he's below I'm under 300 pounds. As a yes, professional, I feel like if you know that my life is on the line at your part, you, you should be able to say something. Like There's you, a lot of assuming. Again, when she, assume when she you said wait. to you, when she said I to you, are you sure you want to do this? And you looked at her and kind of nodded. She assumed so, that you so are under nod, the... She assumed is, that you are a, under a nod, the weight. So say, she reached to nod. give you the a, correct... You, how many Two, words are in a nod? Got, she turned around, you were gone. How we know how, that's how what she's doing? How is You didn't look at the sign. You didn't look at... You didn't look at... Let's have order in the court. Mrs. Simmons, let's go back. Your husband and you passed two signs and then disregarded... Two piles, one's big, one's small. That's the reason why you have people up there to help guide and tell you. If I'm grabbing the wrong tube, tell me. If I'm gonna hurt myself on this ride, tell he didn't me. Give but her chance. Chance. but she didn't, she didn't even chance. open her mouth. What's, a, what's eye contact? Mr. and Mrs. Simmons, Mr. Hargrove, I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. This case has to fit under the legal framework of a personal injury case. There are basically three elements. Personal injury case is like a three-legged stool. If one of them is missing, then the stool fails and so does your case. You all have to prove that Mr. Hargrove and his employees were wrong, that their wrong cause, second leg, your injuries. Clearly, you were injured. Now, the evidence is not that simple in this case. The evidence in this case, you all went to the park for a good family outing, but it does not go without noticing things that are there to protect you. Mr. Hargrove was very specific in pointing out signs at the entrance and then on the ride, both that tell you warning, you do this at your own risk. Mr. Hargrove had a sign that had a weight limit on it. Now, both of those, you all have described, you basically walking by them and that troubles me. Then you get to the top and there are two sets of tubes. You grab the small one without really inquiring as to which one is for adults. You also did not heed, obviously, a gentle but pointed question, should you ride this ride? Now, Mr. Hargrove, these are the essence of your systems and protocols. Safety has to be first. The signs, a lifeguard at the top, someone to warn him, but the should you ride is, is a little soft when the result can be absolutely tragic. Here, Mr. and Mrs. Simmons, you have proven that Mr. Hargrove's employees were wrong, that first leg of the stool. That is, they violated their own systems and protocols by not stopping you, but I cannot ignore that you disregarded three safety measures that were put in place, so you bear some responsibility. Now, in this case, Mr. and Mrs. Simmons, you are suing for $200,000 in medical expenses, uh, $1.8 million in pain and suffering for a total of $2 million. I am not going to give you that because you are partially responsible. I am reducing your $2 million award sought 
to $1.5 million. I am going to find in your favor <laughs> and against Mr. Hargrove for $1.5 million. And this court is adjourned. <laughs> Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Terry Crouppen has to say. Serious injuries can have a devastating effect, not just on the injured victim, but also on their family. This is especially true when the person injured is the primary breadwinner. When they can't work, the paychecks stop, but the bills don't. This stress can be overwhelming. That's why lost wages are such a big part of personal injury settlements. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Richie versus Elizabeth Gray Salon. Mr. Richie, it's my understanding from the documents that you file with this court that you sustained injuries at Miss Gray's salon, and you're asking this court to award you medical expenses of $10,000, pain and suffering of $70,000 for a total award of $80,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Miss Gray, is your position that you provided the service he requested, and this is not your fault. True? Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Mr. Ritchie, what brought you to Miss Gray's salon this day? Well, Your Honor, as a software engineer, I don't really get the chance to meet a lot of women. I've been doing this for about 10 years, and I still don't have a ring or anything like that to show for it. I met this wonderful woman named Debbie, and we have been talking for a good long while. We've been texting, and... It finally came down to the point where she not only wanted to go on a date, but she wanted to go on a trip. She wanted to go to the beach. That's a truth or dare moment. <laughs> I was actually a little bit self-conscious about something that my friend Dave told me. He said that I had to do something about my organic sweater, so to speak, my body hair, Your Honor. Uh -huh. I, I have a lot of it, and he said she'll think it's gross. I need to do something about it. So he uh, knew of Miss Gray's establishment, and he set up the appointment for me. So your friend told you you needed a little manscaping to kind of clean up for this date and the beach appearance. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Gray, tell me about your salon. I am the owner of the Elizabeth Gray Salon. We specialize in facial and hair removal. I've been in business for about 10 years. Um, we offer so many choices from laser, which uses a, a beam of light, to electrolysis, which is electricity, to uh, sugar waxing as well, which is we just rip it right off with a strip. Okay. So we offer, we offer a lot of choices. Uh, about 75% of my clients are women. However, in recent years, Your Honor, I've seen a lot of men coming in for some grooming, uh, waxing some obvious places and not so obvious places. Mm -hmm. So guys get more wax than their chest. Exactly. Everyone likes a little grooming and look their best. I really believe, Your Honor, that if I can help not only women, but all people look beautiful, that inside it will help them feel better about themselves. So when someone comes in for hair removal, particularly a man, uh, you take it off where they want it taken off. We do. We make sure that we go over every step with them. So Mr. Ritchie is not really any different from your other male clients who want their chest to be bare. No, he is not. So Mr. Ritchie, what happened? They take me to this back room where there's no windows or anything and get me down to just my boxers and a robe. So the wax lady comes up to me and she asks, what's your pain tolerance? And I figured since my bud Dave could handle it, so could I, so I just said average. They started off with just one patch of skin. And it's one of those things where you just think that it'll get easier as it keeps going. And that just was not the case. They started off by getting this kind of like the stick and rubbing a little bit of the wax on um, one half of my chest. Okay. And then... Now, it wasn't hurting yet, right? It was, it was already getting there, but I was just trying to bear through it. Okay. So... She gets out the piece of paper and she presses into my skin. That's when I really felt like something was not right. She rips it off and a piece of my skin with it. And she just kept going over and over again until my skin just looked ravaged. It was bubbling, it was blistering. It did not seem like everything was all right. I asked, I asked her, I asked the wax lady, is this supposed to be normal? And she told me, Quit being a baby. Man up. No. It was a harrowing experience, Your Honor. So this is what that wax did to your skin? 
Yes, Your Honor, and it's still painful just standing here in this shirt. Is that how this is supposed to work, Miss Gray? That sounds like a torture chamber. No, Your Honor, that is not how it works at my salon. Well, how is this supposed to work? Well, I was, at the time of this incident, I was in my office doing some filing papers, and one of my estheticians come, came running back to me, and she said she had provided a service to Mr. Ricci. He ran out of the salon without paying. All she cares she about is the money. Tried... Well, I had to run to the ER Honor, for second-degree she... burns. Our process at our salon... But isn't this this simple, though, that you put ha hot wax on the skin and you rip the skin off, then it's not supposed to be that way, right? Isn't it that simple? Actually, it's not that simple. Okay. But we offer various choices to remove hair. And we tried to talk with Mr. Ricci. He did not want to hear it. He Your started Honor, I was on my lunch break. I was just trying around. to get in and get out. It's supposed to be something simple. Out. That is not the process of our salon. What we, options did you We get? offer laser. That's when we use a beam of light. We offer electrolysis, using electricity to uh, burn the hair follicle, sugar wax, a substance over the subject where we use a shrimp to take off the hair in the opposite direction of hair growth. So if he had used these other options, then he wouldn't have had these injuries? Exactly. If he would have listened to what my esthetician was trying to tell him, but instead he would not. Your Honor, it wasn't that I wasn't listening. It was that there were, um, I was getting pulled into the appointment before I even had time to ask any real questions. Uh, you guys said, oh, we have a line. We have to get going, Mr. Ricci. Did they that give you options? No, Your Honor, they did not give me all the options. Because you were not listening, Mr. Ricci. If he doesn't understand the options, then it's pretty natural that he choose what you put in front of him, right? And that's where he is not being forthcoming with the truth. We set him down to make sure he understood his choices. Okay. And we are for many, as I've already stated. He would not listen. We even But look tested. at his chest, Miss Gray. Hot wax, is it supposed to do that? This is unfortunate, but however, we tested a patch of his skin with hot wax. He did not complain at all, Your Honor. He even said, oh, my tolerance level for pain is average. What is your scale, the Spanish Inquisition? And that, and if he does not let someone know about if this hurts or it doesn't hurt, how are we supposed to know? No, I didn't know I had to come up with a single no, word. Anytime, anytime we deal with cases, that involve a pain tolerance. It's always dangerous to compare women's pain tolerance versus men. Exactly. We're babies. Y'all have babies. That okay? is right, Your Honor. You've submitted $10,000 in medical expenses to this court. Please explain your injuries. Not only did I experience second degree burns, they ravaged and permanently scarred my chest for the rest of my life. A guy like me doesn't get too many chances with Debbie's. And these, these people, these, this staff at Elizabeth Gray's salon have permanently damaged any chances of ever meeting another Debbie. For the rest of my life. This is what her staff did to me, Your Honor. That looks like that hurts right now. It feels like sandpaper every time I try to even move my arm. Ms. Gray, you see, these are real permanent injuries. He did not say anything that he was in any pain. He just kept silent. This is the first time kept I'm silent. I was rolling around on the table, panting, and I asked her, I asked her, was this normal? Was this supposed to be happening? And she told me, man up, quit being a baby. Mr. Ritchie, I'm not as brave as you are. I've never had manscaping. So I've got to understand exactly how this happens from a technical standpoint. This court has consulted an expert esthetician, Ms. Erin Renee. Sheriff, will you get Ms. Renee from the hallway, please? Yes, Your Honor. Tell the truth next time, Mr. Ritchie. Talk to me, folks. Good day, Ms. Renee. Hi. How long have you been working as an esthetician? I've been an esthetician for 14 years. I did bring a model because I wanted to show the process of hair removal with waxing. With the hot wax, all estheticians who perform this service always check the temperature of the wax before they start removing hair. And we check the temperature on ourselves by applying a little bit on the inside of our arm here. And that way, we know exactly what the client is gonna be experiencing. 
So I'm applying the wax on the direction that the hair actually grows so that you're able to get all of the hair follicles out with one pull. I am always honest with my clients and I try to understand their threshold for pain before we get started with the service. In his client intake form, he filled out all of the questions and he said that his pain tolerance was pretty average. And he also said that he's not on any medications that would make his skin hypersensitive to the waxing. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. Mm. Yes. So you'll feel it. Now, I'm seeing his reaction. He's got tears in his eyes. <laughs> Mr. Robbins, thank you for coming in here. How did that feel? It hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Renee, he got second degree burns where his skin was ripped out. I won't say that's typical or it's not supposed to necessarily happen. However, there are different things that will impact your results. One, what did he do before the waxing? Mm. Whether it was laying out by the beach or going to the pool, hanging out, whether it was doing a lot of drinking before he came in to get his service. There are different things that can impact the results. Thank you, ma'am. You are released. Thank you, Mr. Robin. Mr. Richie, I gotta ask you, were you drinking, taking medications? Did you go to the beach? No, Your Honor. Your Honor, may I present to you a disclosure form? Sheriff, if you'll retrieve the disclosure form. Thank you very much. It reads, Wax Services Client Release Form. Number one, have you ever been treated for skin cancer? You mark no. Correct. Number six, are you exposed to the sun on a daily basis or are you considering spending more time in the sun soon? You mark no. Correct. Number seven, Correct. do you use a tanning bed? Listen. You mark no and then there's a signature next to the customer signature indication. Is that your signature, Mr. Ritchie? Your Honor, yes, that might be my signature. So you lied. How do you know he lied? I have a witness who can corroborate my story. And your witness is Miss Alice Roman. That is correct. Miss Roman, would you stand and sure. come to the podium? Absolutely. What did Mr. Ritchie lie about? Well, I was in the waiting room with Mr. Ritchie as he was talking on the phone very loudly. I wasn't trying to be nosy. And I overheard him saying that he was at the tanning bed prior to coming into the salon. You went to the tanning bed, but you said no on the form? I don't even have time to really read them before they dragged me to the back, eager so to get to their torture. you were not listening and not even reading the questions. Folks, let me give you a legal lesson. Anytime you go into a business and they have you fill out an information packet or an application, it is very, very, very important that you be honest because they have to rely on your representation. Ms. Roman, you, you may be seated. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Gray, so your esthetician put the wax on her arm? The esthetician actually tested his skin, Your Honor. And he did not complain, he did not say anything. Oh, my uh, pain tolerance is average. I think I've heard what I need to hear and I'm ready to render my decision. Folks, in every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove really three things. You gotta prove that the defendant was wrong, that's number one. Number two is that that wrong caused your injuries. You've put up evidence here today that you totally relied on Elizabeth Gray Salon to take the hair off your chest so you could go on this romantic journey with Debbie. Instead, the esthetician put the hot wax on your chest and ripped your skin off changed your chest forever and destroyed your opportunity potentially for the love of your life. Ms. Gray, you have put up evidence today that your salon gave him several options, but he wasn't listening. He wanted this chest hair gone. He chose the hot wax. Your esthetician actually put it on his skin and asked him, is it too hot? When he didn't complain, she went forward with the procedure and he got burns. You've pointed out that he was not quite forthcoming on the application where he indicated that he had not been in a tanning bed. In fact, he had. Here, that collision of the evidence raises two legal principles. One is care for your own safety. 
You have a responsibility to take care of yourself long before you look to someone else to take care of you. Part of that is being truthful on the application form. The other legal principle is professional judgment. Although manscaping and hair removal is common, it is a profession. It's why estheticians have to be licensed. Here, that professional judgment involves not only application of the wax, but whether to do it in light of the circumstances. The expert witness put the wax on her own arm to see if it was hot. The evidence in this case, your esthetician tested the wax on his skin. Your salon is responsible for Mr. Ritchie's injuries because your professional judgment is not relieved based on his misrepresentation. You still must exercise professional judgment in determining whether the wax is too hot or not. It is very simple. It was too hot, should not have been put on, it caused real injury, this is your fault. I find in favor of the plaintiff, and I'm going to award you a total award of $80,000 against Elizabeth Gray Salon. That's my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. <laughs> Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Terry Crouppen has to say. A professional is held to a high standard when performing a service for pay. The esthetician should have known the plaintiff had been to a tanning booth by the orange color of his skin. Based on this, they should have warned him about proceeding with waxing or refused to perform the service. Bottom line, the wax was too hot and that's why the plaintiff won.